Hi everyone. Uh, today I want to do a, something a little bit different than what I what I usually do in these uh, in these little videos. Um, and instead of talking about random little Haskell things, I actually want to uh, uh, tell you just a little bit about a, a paper uh, that uh, that was published uh, recently at Popple. So this is uh, videos live a long time on the internet. This is Popple 2021, um, and the paper that I that I want to be talking about is this one. A graded dependent type system with a usage aware semantics. Um, so that's that's a bit of a mouthful, um, as you can see here, uh, written uh, with with several colleagues. Um, I actually don't claim uh, uh, too much originality uh, for myself in this work. Um, uh, Pritam was the, the primary force uh, behind it. Um, uh, he's a, a student at University of Pennsylvania right now. Harley Eads is a professor at Augusta University. Contributed a lot of expertise on graded dependent graded type theories. Uh, uh, Stephanie Weirich, also with lots of expertise on dependent type theory. So it was a nice sort of combination of people. It was a lot of fun. Um, so so let's see. Uh, what what does this what does this mean? Oh, and by the way, I should say I've learned to prefer more informative paper titles, even if they aren't very interesting sounding. And and some of my papers have some material that's widely accessible to a Haskell uh, audience. Um, uh, this probably isn't one of them, uh, unfortunately. But I hope to introduce some of the, the interesting concepts in this in this video today. Uh, so so let's uh, let's let's dive into some code. Oh, oh, there's already Idris. We're not ready for Idris yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with some Haskell. Um, so if I write this function, by the time I'm done, oh, let me. I don't want to conflict with something in the prelude. Um, by the time I'm done writing this type signature, I already know what the body must be, right? If I compile this, uh, th this works, of course. And the idea here is that if, if I write a function that goes from A to A for any type A, well, it can't do anything other than just return its argument. Uh, let's ignore the possibility of undefined and, and other and throwing exceptions and things. Let's just not worry about that today. Um, but, but here, we really only have one sort of proper function of this type. But what's weird is that that's not true in type families. So if I write this, what, let me write a standalone kind of signature first, my id a arrow a type family my id a where, I guess this should be x. So that works, of course. I could do that, but I can also do sneaky things. Um, Like that, and that compiles, right? If I try to do something like that here, uh, th that's just no good, right? We get an error saying can't match a with bool. Well, why are we allowed to do it down here? So it turns out that there's an implicit argument being passed to this myid. So let's take this implicit argument and make it explicit. So as written, this type signature really means this, All right? There's this for all a dot. Um, but what we can do in, in recent uh, versions of GHC, I think I'm on GHC 8.10 here, um, is I can actually make this argument explicit. So instead of saying for all a dot, I can now write for all a arrow, which means that I have to pass it explicitly. Um, and then here, now if I start passing this in, now we're going to get an error saying that here I've said that this is type tie, but actually um, I've written false, or this is type tie, and actually this is true. So I can't write tie here. I have to write bool. And now it's a little bit clearer what's going on. There's actually sort of two levels of pattern match going on in these first equations. First, I'm pattern matching on this first argument, the choice of A, and then I'm pattern matching on something of type A. What's strange here is that even though this is a dependent argument, it's something that is also what we call relevant. I can pattern match on it. I can make decisions in how my program flow, uh, well, how my program flows based on, uh, on what, the, what is passed in here. So if it's bool, I can do, whoops, uh, I can do one of these top equations. Otherwise, I can do something else. Um, so that's, that's already really interesting. I can't do that in terms, and that's because in Haskell, types are erased, right? The choice of A is gone by the time I'm evaluating my id. Whereas here in types, well, we're sort of already in the erased component, so having something that's also erased, I can use that because all of this stuff is going to get erased in the end anyway. 
um, and that's all very true. But it turns out this is not this is not very um, intuitive, and, and and the idea that when I write a function of this type, I can already know something about its body. That idea is wrapped up in this theory called parametricity, uh, which we're not going to explore the details of today. Uh, but this, the fact that I can match on bool here means that this idea of parametricity, which is very powerful, I can't use in type families. I can't use in writing my compile time programs. Um, and so, and then, so that's a shame. So what I'd really like to be able to do is distinguish between arguments that are sort of kept around and arguments that aren't kept around. Well, it turns out that we already have a mechanism in Haskell in the latest versions of Haskell um, to track how th how arguments are used, and that's linearity, right? So with with linear types, I can track whether an argument is used once or many times. Well, here this a right. If I write this out as for all a dot, um, I want this first argument. We can think of my it as really taking two arguments. The first one is the type, and then the second one is a term of that type. I really want to say that this first argument isn't used at all in the body. Um, and so instead of just one or many, I want there to be a zero, saying that this first argument is never used in evaluation. It can be erased. And that really gets to the heart of the paper that was presented to Poppel. Um, uh, by the way, there's a, a bunch of, of links in the description here. Uh, um, uh, if I can, if I can get it, I'll, I'll get a link to the the, the talks. Uh, they're sort of wrapped up in the in the Clouder instance for Popple, but I think I'll be able to get them out. Um, and uh, um, let's see, where was I? Oh, so this is the heart of that paper: is that I want to add a new, um, essentially a new way of tracking usage that isn't just one or many, but also zero. So I can say what things are erased. And I can know that these zero things can't actually be used. Well, we don't have an implementation of this, uh, at least not in Haskell. So I'm going to flip over to Idris, which does have an implementation of a, of a closely related idea. So let's jump over to Idris. So this is actually going to be Idris 2. Let me, whoops, over here. Um, so I will run Idris 2. Hopefully that does something. And then I can load my file. OK, so those of you who don't know Idris, it's OK. The syntax of Idris is very, very similar to Haskell, so this should look fairly uh, familiar. So in fact, I can write these same declarations here. And I'm not quite as familiar with Idris as Haskell, so I, I might bumble a little bit, but I hope not to. Um, and so this is the same thing. Even in Idris, I can't do something like this um, because, well, we can't do that uh, because we expected type A and uh, not type bool. But actually, I can be a little bit more explicit about this. So again, the syntax is, is different. Um, and so I could write, um, let's see, A is a type um, here. And oh, but I want it to be implicit. So let me put that in braces. And then now, ooh, it gets accepted. Um, so the idea here is that when I declare this, I'm actually implicitly saying that this is usable many times. So right now, this myid is just like that type family myid that I that I originally wrote in the Haskell program, where uh, where it matched on this invisible argument. But in Idris, I can say zero right there. Whoops. And then now suddenly I get the same error that I got just a few minutes ago. And this zero is saying, I want this to be erased. I want this type in this case, because it's a type because we see the word type here. I want this to be erased uh, when compiling my program. I don't want to be able to pattern match on it. I want to reject this program. That's exactly what this zero means. And, and Idris 2 allows me to do one here as well to do linearity, but it's really the zero that I'm focusing on. So our paper, I said, our, you know, why, how could we write a paper if this is already implemented in another language, right? So Idris is based on, um, on a theory called quantitative type theory. Um, our theory is something else called GRAD. Uh, you can look at the papers. There's, there's some similarities there. But I do want to highlight one big difference, and that is in, the, in QTT, the theory behind Idris, once we're writing in an irrelevant context, it sort of forgets everything. So let's get rid of this example for a sec and instead look at something else. Um, so let's say I say f is int, and this is a bit silly, but I'm allowed to do it if I want to. I can write this, um, and that's just fine. So here I've written a, a little identity lambda, and I've applied it to 5. Um, 
it turns out the syntax here, I could put a zero here, which means that this x is one of these erased things. But actually, if we look at this lambda, that doesn't make any sense. We can't erase x. We have to return x. And so if I try to compile, whoops, if I try to compile this, I'm going to get an error saying x is not accessible in this context, right? Because I've said we're not using x at all. And so I've, I've used it here. That's, that's very naughty of me. So we're not allowed to do that. Um, here, if I write 1 on the other hand, uh, then, then all is well. What's bizarre is that I can also do this in types, because we have type level lambda as an address. Um, and so if I do this, now, according to the, the, what I've just said to you, um, this shouldn't work, because here I've said this is, we've, we're using x zero times, but now I'm returning it. But let's see what happens in Idris. It's just fine. And it's just fine because I'm using this lambda in an irrelevant context. So this doesn't break Idris. This is actually OK. But it is a little confusing and I think a little unexpected um, that I think that this expression, this lambda, should just never be allowed. Um, but Idris and QTT do allow it. The theory that we describe in, in our paper does not allow it. It, it does proper resource tracking, um, even in types, even in irrelevant contexts. Um, again, there's, it's, it's, these details are sort of buried in the paper. Paper's a little uh, rough going if, if you're not a, a type theory student. Um, in any case, um, we do expect to implement dependent types in Haskell using uh, a very similar model. So where the idea of relevance, whether or not we can array something, is now tied into linearity in a really nice way because it forms sort of this cohesive picture. Um, and the paper actually proves that if we, if we put a zero, when we really can erase the thing. Um, and so that's a very important property for Haskell uh, to keep Haskell running fast. Um, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching.